In January, the first round of Nord Talks was held at the Oil Tank Culture Park in Western Seoul. Jointly organized by the embassies of four Nordic countries in Korea, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and Finland, this three-part project was established to introduce the Nordic way of life and thinking regarding global topics relevant to Korea. Before the talks, Norwegian ambassador to Korea, Frode Solberg, and Swedish ambassador, Jakob Hallgren, welcomed the audience. They wanted the talks to help establish a solid foothold for offline and online conversations about the future and continued growth of Korea and the Nordics. Uh, and when you mention India, one thing that we should perhaps also mention, um, we have received some questions uh, as well. Uh, this year, three of the five Nordic countries are celebrating their 60 years of diplomatic relations with Korea. Uh, and so this first is 60 years. the first 60 years, uh, the right in 60 years, but the first in six, next 60 years. 600, 600 years. Uh, we, we, we are here for the long term, you know that. Um, but, but that will be, this is also partly a part of that celebration. Each and every one of our embassies will have uh, different events over this year. And that makes the theme for the first Nord Talks event was education and employment in the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution refers to the current and developing environment in which disruptive technologies and trends such as the Internet of Things, robotics, virtual reality, and artificial intelligence are changing the way we live and work, as well as blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. Having taken center stage at this year's World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, it is one of the biggest topics of our time. During the first Nord Talks event, experts from Denmark and Finland talked about their experiences in the Fourth Industrial Revolution and career strategies to keep up with the fast pace of technological change. You know, when if there was something that I kind of messed up, no one told me like, if you think about nowadays, this organization here, it's nowadays Europe's largest entrepreneurship society. Starpsana, at the time, a Eurasia's leading zero equity accelerator. Slush nowadays, I'm not sure if you guys heard, but it's, it's world's number one startup conference. I think my main message was don't be too focused on your grades and your degree. Focus more uh, on the skills you want to learn uh, and don't be afraid of the change. You're the country in the world with most robots per habitant. So you know and you can teach the rest of the world how to actually cooperate with technology and robots. And I think, I think the Nordic countries can learn so much from South Korea because you're the country in the world with the most robots and you're so experienced in automation, in production and industry. And that is something that the rest of the world is struggling with. But I think what South Korea can learn from the Nordic countries is our focus on play. Like Lego, the company with the playing bricks is Danish, and I think that's something important in our culture that we are playing throughout schools, and uh, we actually know that families that play together and play with their kids are happily, happier families. So playing is an important part of being human and also learning for the future. Let's learn more about the Fourth Industrial Revolution with the representatives of four of the most innovative countries in the world and their vision for shared growth with Korea. Welcome to a very special edition of The Diplomat. My name is Panita Bajaj and today I am joined by four very special representatives of the Nordic countries here to talk about an interesting topic of the fourth industrial revolution. To my right we have Swedish ambassador to Korea Jacob Hallgren. We have Finnish ambassador to Korea Eero Suominen. 
Norwegian Ambassador to Korea Frode Solberg and Executive Director of Innovation Center Denmark in Seoul, Martin Rune Hoekser. Welcome to the show. Thank you for uh, joining Thank us you. today. Thank you very much. Now, we are talking about the fourth industrial revolution. And as we were saying beforehand, it could sound unfamiliar to certain people. However, on the other hand, it seems like a very hot topic. Um, as it was part of the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland, just a few weeks back. So we wanted to first ask, how do your respective countries kind of ensure this competitive advantage when it comes to industrial structure or if it's just in a social way. Ambassador Holgren? You can call me Jacob, by the way. Jacob. Because that's the Nordic way that we okay. call each other by, by the first name. Now, I think that the, the thing here is that you need to realize, and I think we have realized in the Nordic country, that the fourth industrial revolution is here and now. It happens as we speak. Yeah? whether we like it or, or not. And I think that the Nordic countries, just like Korea, by the way, are leaders when it comes to that revolution. Mm -hmm. Now, that brings a lot of opportunities and potentially challenges as well. And that's why this issue is so incredibly both relevant, important, and interesting. That's right. Well, uh, Eero, may I say, do you have anything to add to that? Actually, we are quite well prepared for that because it's, uh, we are countries that put a lot of uh, research and development. We have high education for everybody. And of course, we have uh, quite lively startup scenes uh, that uh, there's a lot of uh, young startups based on the technology, based on the young people's enthusiasm and energy. That's something that, and also cooperation. That's something that is, is uh, giving good uh, opportunities for us to make, uh, I would say, make cooperation also with, with Korea. Mm -hmm. Well, I think speaking of education, it seems like there are a lot of concerns on one end talking about um, how to educate students for the future, uh, whether it's new jobs or is it a shift of jobs or is it just jobs being shifted from people to now robots and it seems like maybe the middle class is disappearing and things like that. And I heard that the first event of this project, the Nordic Talks, the topic was education and employment for industrious 4.0 as they call it um, in the fourth industrial revolution. So can we ask how or why this topic was particularly chosen, Frode? Well, I, I think it's, it, it's uh, education is, uh, is the basis and the ground for everything. And, uh, and this is a challenge. And I think, um, uh, as, as Jacob said, we can like it or not, but we, we're in there. I think we are well prepared. Mm -hmm. And I think we're entering into the future with, uh, with optimism and a positive attitude. Um, we, have, we have sort of transferred or transferring our society right now. We just actually, a week ago, uh, appointed a new minister for digitalization oh, wow. uh, just to be prepared and to, to focus. Uh, but I, I think, and, and um, the educational system has to take uh, an important part of this to be prepared for the future. Very true. Uh, I think we also have to think about two strategies. I think when we talk about the fourth industrial revolution, uh, we, we focus on technology, robots, right. autonomous solutions and so on, but we also have to remind ourselves of the other strategy to take care of those who will not be able to mm -hmm. have a job in the future, that right. their will, jobs will be replaced. So there's a social aspect in this as well, and I think that's, that's an equally important part in order to, to make this uh, to happen with a positive aptitude and that everybody can be part of it. Right, so is there a certain plan uh, certain policies when it comes to employment or education that uh, respective countries would implement to cultivate this desire to move forward, to go on uh, and learn about this new technology that to some countries it may be so unfamiliar and um, quite new for this Industry 4.0. What are some of the examples that you can share with us, Martin? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess uh, many societies, and that's the Nordics, uh, Nordic countries as well, they need to adapt. They need to be sure that uh, we bring the whole society on, on, on top of uh, the agenda as well when it comes to technology and so. I think what was pointed out before on the importance of education is very much uh, what is happening in Denmark as well. I think what I would like to, to uh, point at is 
the dual educational system as well. It's uh, further education, so I think it's a matter of lifelong learning very much. Uh, I think being a candidate with an academic degree and coming out and, and uh, taking up your first job. I think what we heard from the talks today and some key points uh, that was pointed out today was also that you're going to shift jobs, you're going to reinvent yourself. One of the key skills that is going to be needed is for you to be curious. So I think you, you need to reinvent yourself. You need further education. Right. We need to have an adaptable educational system as well. Right. So uh, I hope that is, uh, that is what we, uh, we're able to do also in Denmark. And uh, I think that's, that's why we also have a global out view and, and trying to work internationally to basically adapt the best ideas that we can get also from uh, Korea. Right. I mean, I think reinventing yourself in any field can only benefit yourself. Um, and talking about, you know, creating new new ways to go through education and things like that. I mean, you're representing the countries that are what the happiest country to live in or, you know, the most happiest and things like that. So you guys must be doing something right. I mean, compared to, let's say, America, which I am originally from, the education system is somewhat frowned upon when it comes to comparing to Europe or the Nordic countries. Um, and I wanted to ask, um, I think it's also quite different to here in Korea. So I believe creativity, the spontaneous skill almost, is what is needed to kind of thrive uh, on this industrial revolution. So are there any tips or any advice that you can give to Korea? How, because I think Korea is a very exam-oriented um, culture, so a lot of students worry about memorizing and always have to, you know, memorize the formula or the or the vocab and things like that. What can you tell the students of this country? I think that's uh, <clears throat> one of the challenges is that you challenge your teachers, you challenge you know, the knowledge, you're curious, you find yourself, your, the answers yourself. You don't accept always the, the, the answers that you were given. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you need certain kind of freedom of thought, freedom of time to be creative. Right. Creative doesn't happen so much in the stress, but it happens in the, when there is, a, there is a silent moments, when there is challenges, when there are uh, new ways to find. That is the best way to, to, to be creative and, and at the same time <clears throat> we as uh, Nordic countries it's also that you have certain kind of safety which is provided by the, by the society that you are able to be free but at the same time you're pretty safe. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you I think there is some sort of environment where people can be free to express themselves and then others are kind of restrained um, and not uh, not encouraged to express their creativity. Do you have anything to add? Well, well I would just, uh, I, th I think what you're touching upon, and I, I think we should, um, as we heard in the talks today as well, and I think we all agree on, uh, both in Nordic countries and, and in Korea, that we, we should not be afraid of the future, we should embrace the future. I mean, every day, all generations have gone into the future with not knowing what will come. And, and I don't think we should regard the fourth uh, industrial uh, revolution in any way. We should just be prepared. And, and I think young people, children today, they will play a crucial part in this and, and doing the transformation. And in that part, to, to, to keep the, um, the playfulness mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, as we use the word, uh, reinvent, but also be able to think new, uh, give children. Uh, I think there was a time when we were quite hesitant to give children tablets and telephones and so on. Nowadays, um, I myself have changed and I think it's, it's, it's a good move. We need, to, we need to give children the possibility to try new technology and that's the way to, to sort of embrace the future sure. as well. Sure. Now, uh, I would argue that there are some people who go overboard in giving their children these tablets and things like that. Is everybody married with kids? Yeah. Do you yes. all uh, have a certain tablet mm. or that mm. you present to your kids to yeah. fiddle around? Yeah. Is there a borderline when it comes to going to a restaurant and mm. kind of just giving them the screen just to be happy? Mm. Or how can you manage that balance? Martin? Well, it shouldn't substitute uh, sports or, or you know personal sure. relationships. Right. So, so yes, I think there is a the, 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 there is a challenge. Of course, there is. Uh, we need to find out how can we, in the best way possible, use and utilize technology. 
in, in whether it's for education, for getting new skills. I think it's important that you improve your skill set in uh, every way possible. But I also think that in the future, it's more important that you become more human even. So empathy was pointed out as right. a key point. So I think uh, you don't train that by using technology. So technology on one side can be used for many things. And I think that's improving our life. We can have, there are many examples of how it has improved. And uh, it's, it's easier, uh, the things that we can access with technology but there are many other skill sets that we will uh, learn from not technology. Right, yeah, I do believe so. And I think certain people um, worry. I guess I'm talking about myself when I say that. <laughs> I kind of worry, you watch the news and talking about how people are trying to now download our brain into this data and you wonder, well, is will it have this empathy, this sympathy? Um, can you download emotions into a computer. Um, well, in what way do you think that Korea and uh, you know, respective countries, the Nordic countries, will be able to partner and perhaps lead uh, the fourth industrial revolution together? Frode? Well, I think uh, from our part, I think um, sustainability is, is a key element uh, in, in, the, in the future uh, for all of us, whether we're talking about the fourth industrial revolution or any other aspect. Uh, I, I think uh, sustainability will be there as a, as a most important area. Uh, and in that regard, I think to cooperate within the topics, the areas that we, we know that we have expertise in, both the Nordic countries, uh, Norway for my regard, but, but Nordic countries in general, and in Korea. Uh, that being renewable energy, uh, smart solution, autonomous solution, green shipping, uh, so smart cities. So I think within many areas, um, the Nordic countries and Korea are on the top of the world and have the best possible uh, platform and the, uh, the starting point for close cooperation. Mm -hmm. So I think together we can, we can manage many of the challenges mm -hmm. that will come in the, in the coming years. Yeah. Uh I, I do believe that, as I mentioned before, uh, Korea and the Nordic countries are, are innovation leaders or top in, uh, topping all of the, the rankings. But I think we are maybe innovative in, in different ways and, and that we are very complementary. So, for instance, the Korean uh, education system is focused on on, on learning in, in, in a quantitative way, and you are topping all of the ranks there. Whereas in the Nordics, there's more, maybe a little bit more of an emphasis on the qualitative skills. I mean, it's not to suggest that the, the formal education and exams are not in, important right. in the Nordic countries as, as well. But that's where I see an emerging uh, combo, because we are leaders, but in different ways, and we are complementary. Right. And that is something that I'd like to understand, explore, and, and, and probably maybe even exploit uh, sure. uh, uh, mutually, of course. It's like a so puzzle piece that... I am convinced because this is not only about, uh, you know, the education system. It's something about the mentalities. I think there is something about this Confucian, uh, you know, can-do, fast learning, uh, uh, adaptive mentality of Korea that rings a bell in, in the Nordic countries. I've heard it so many times that Swedish or uh, Nordic entrepreneurs think that it's easy to deal with Koreans. We've got something in common. And that is an, a potential that I still think is, is untapped. Sure. We could do more. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I would like to add, especially the, the SMEs, especially small, uh, high quality entrepreneurs that I think that is that that many young people they they made the enterprise born global and that is something that they are ambitious they are hardworking they are creative and and it is very easy to to start on these things that 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 bring the young entrepreneurs together from Nordic countries and from the Korean uh, from Korea and then work together with a very high uh, quality innovations, and this is something that, that, that I think that we can, we can have a big chances of uh, developing good cooperation. Right, I believe so as well. Well, before we wrap up, a last question is perhaps you could share with us how you're planning to expand this cooperation uh, with Korea in this uh, year of Industry 4.0. Martin. 
Well, for one, we are sitting here because we are doing a North Talk uh, event together. And we're doing three of those uh, in this year as well. So I think what we're trying to do is to make more platforms to, to collaborate with our Korean stakeholders as well. Uh, we at the Danish Embassy have an innovation center as well, and we are working very much also with the Ford Industrial Committee in, in Korea and, our, uh, and the committee that we have in, in Denmark, uh, the Disruption Council. So we are trying to set up the, the governance to governance uh, kind of structure so we have more platforms to collaborate on. Well, well, first I would like to say that, um, uh, that the cooperation between Norway and Korea, and I think the Nordic countries and Korea already, is uh, very wide and, and covers many, many areas. Um, but I, there are still potential for more, and especially as we enter into the future and, and uh, with some, some challenges. I, I think for our part, um, we'll continue focusing on the areas where we have the complementary mm -hmm. and the strong areas. Mm -hmm. The maritime sector is, is obvious. Uh, there are so many challenges ahead when it comes to green new solutions, autonomous solutions, uh, more sustainable uh, shipping as well. Uh, then renewable energy solutions. Uh, Norway is a, is a leading energy nation in the world and I think we have complementary areas where we can really help each other in, in making uh, the world greener. Uh, I would probably also like to mention finally uh, taking care of the health of the planet okay. uh, when it comes to the oceans uh, right. we have some huge challenges and I think that we are both um, seafarers ocean seeking nations and uh, we together I think we can make a difference in, in taking care of, uh, of the oceans. Right absolutely and I know Sweden also is quite impressive of how they deal with the solar power and things like that. Mm. Do you have anything mm. to add as well? Well, first of all, I could say that uh, uh, three of our four uh, uh, nations represented here tonight are actually celebrating a 60 years anniversary of diplomatic relations. And you are... 45. 45, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we are using that opportunity. I mean, NOR Talks is one format, but there are other formats for bilateral seminars and exchanges in every way, government to government and civil society to civil society and, of course, business to, to, to business. So, yes, it's true. I mean, yes. Sweden might be very good at sustainable solution, but that goes for the other countries here represented uh, uh, tonight. And that is an ongoing challenge to deal with the climate. That's probably most, the most existential and important. So Sweden, for one, is going to be, according to a parliamentary decision, fossil free in 2045. Mm -hmm. So, so that is an aim, and you need to live up to that, and right. you need to dedicate your resources and, and focus to achieve that. And I, I think we, want to, we have realized that as relatively, after all, I mean, the five countries are 27 million persons. That's not a lot. But in order to also be leaders in the future, you need to invest in what is existential for the future. And I think green energy or green solutions is certainly one of them. Right, right? absolutely. Uh, I mean, I think I would want my grandchildren to be able to see the Aurora lights as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something that um, it seems like it's too far off, but then again, it's happening right before our eyes. Yeah. As well. Do you have anything to add as well? well uh, I come from a Nokia country, so of course I have to bring up IT. And this okay. is this is the the way that that you know and, and you are Samsung uh, which is strong and I think that in in other countries uh, Nordic countries the IT sector is is very strong and I think that's one of the areas that you know there is different kinds of this health it is also gaming you you mm -hmm. uh, uh, develop new games uh, you do all kinds of, uh, of uh, different solutions and I think it's also that when the 5G comes you know there is even more different kinds of, uh, of a solutions from the big data to a, to a much more faster uh, an internet and, and that's something that, that uh, I think we find uh, quite uh, attractive. Sure, yeah. yeah. Well, there you have it. Thank you very much, ambassadors, for joining us today to teach us about this fourth industrial revolution and about education as well. I'm sure that uh, many of us are looking forward to the harmony and the prosperity that comes along with this industrial Industrial Revolution. Once again, thank you very much for being on our show. Thank you for having us. <laughs>
then it's like, oh yeah, but this, oh but this.